Actually, the biggest giver is the miser. And why is that so? One of the very famous misers in history has been J. Paul Jetty. In the 1940s and 1950s, he got oil field rights in Saudi Arabia and he became a multi-millionaire. In the year 1957, Forbes magazine declared him to be the richest man in the world. He used to live in the suburbs of London where he had a 700 acre estate. But his stinginess was very famous. He used to wear rumpled clothes and tattered sweaters. He had installed a public telephone in his estate. So if any guest wished to use the phone, he would not have to pay the bill for it. But ultimately, at the end of his life, he left everything behind. Why? Because there is no way we can take anything with us. When anyone dies, what do people ask? Nagar Seth, kitna apne saath le gaye? How much did this billionaire take with him? Of course not. They all say, how much did he leave behind? And the answer is, he left everything. So that is why, let us not delay in the act of giving. Let's read about this from the art and science of happiness. There are three stages in human life. One, learn. Acquire education and skills. Two, earn. Use your talent to generate wealth. And three, return. Give back to the world. Most people focus on the first two, but miss out on the third. However, if we do not give back, our wealth will remain impure. Nature will then force us to spend on medical bills and doctor's fees. Therefore, to purify our wealth, we must open our hearts to charity. Compare wealth to cow dung. Both possess the potential to nurture. Cow dung is excellent manure, rich in nutrients for plants. When spread out on the earth, it improves the soil and nourishes vegetation. But if piled in one place, it breeds pathogens and stinks. The nature of wealth is much the same. When hoarded in one place, it increases pride and breeds vices. But when distributed, it bestows prosperity and well-being. Here, I would like to add the concept of charity with dignity. One lady stopped by the fruit seller and said how much for the bananas. Madam, he said, five rupees per banana. The lady started bargaining. I will give you 25 rupees for seven bananas. The poor fruit seller needed his sales. He said, all right, madam, as you wish. She thought she had won by squeezing that poor person of a few rupees. Then she accompanied her Saheli, her friend, to the restaurant. She asked for the bill at the end of the meal. It was 1,200 rupees. She gave a 100 rupee tip and deposited their 1,300 rupees. Again thinking she had done a great act of generosity. 
Why is it that we squeeze the poor so much? One person used to instruct his son that look, these poor people, for them every rupee is important. Do not bargain too much with them. So when a poor boy would come to sell goods, he would, without bargaining, pay the price. Next time you are purchasing from a poor person, remember, if you don't bargain, you are giving charity with dignity for the person who is receiving it.